Hello, welcome to episode 198 of the Epic Film Challenge 2, 1001 Movies You Must See Before You Die, Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. This one surprised me quite a bit. I had always been aware of it, you know, for years and years, that famous scene in the phone booth with the woman getting attacked by birds and cracking the window and stuff. It was a lot on TV shows, like scariest moments and things. It looks really goofy. Looking at that phone booth sequence outside the context of the entire movie, it looks like a really just cheesy kind of B-movie, you know. It doesn't look like a Hitchcock film. It's like, really? He did one of those? But I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great, actually. Um, the story is about a woman who... How do you sum the story up quickly? It's about a woman who goes from San Francisco, where she lives, to a few more, a few hours north to Bodega Bay in pursuit of a man, basically. Who <laughs> she meets at a bird shop. Who she meets at a bird shop. And then when she gets to this town, Bodega Bay, birds start... Um, making their presence known in the town, and slowly but surely it becomes the shit this... on everyone. <laughs> if only, <laughs> but uh, it, yeah, it, it kind of. I really love how the the presence of the birds and the, their looming presence and the threat of the birds it very slowly amps up over the two hours until it's just absolute like warfare by the end of the movie, and it's just she's pursuing this guy called Mitch, played by Rod Taylor, who. Just every time I look at his face, I just saw Robin Williams. There, yeah. there was just this kind of the, the chiseled look of his face was in the the hair and everything. The eyes and the mouth. And the woman, the Melanie, is played by Tippi Hedren, who was also in Marnie, which is a pretty good one as well. And I think this was her first film role. And Hitchcock seemed to have quite a thing for blondes, so I'm sure he was happy to get another another blonde to add to his collection, so to speak. What what, what do you think of the the film? We watched this in two runs, didn't we? Yeah, we watched, I think, the first... Because you started watching it, and you were just supposed to watch it without me, but I kept watching it. Yeah, you weren't And it was convinced. really, really late in the evening, so I couldn't stay up to watch the rest. Yeah. So, you waited for me until the next day so that we could finish it, because I was intrigued. Yeah. The acting was really great, the shots were good. There was nothing that made me go, oh, it's going to be a long one. Yeah. I enjoyed every part of it. Yeah. Even the parts where nothing really happened. Yeah, I remember when we stopped watching, you said, like, this can just be the whole movie. Just yeah. this story, it doesn't need, like, the birds or anything. Because it was so natural, and that's, I, I think that's what I liked the most about it. Like, Hitchcock does that, like, even though there's nothing going on in the scene, and they just have a normal conversation, it just feels so natural that you enjoy looking at it. At least yeah. that's what I remember from all the other movies. Like, it doesn't need to be scary or something like that. Like, Rear Window. You could just look out the window and see birds. <laughs> I don't care. It's just intriguing anyways. He's, um, a, he's a master of storytelling. Yeah, he's, he's really, really good. Making something so normal, something so terrifying. Like, if I watched this in a... What year is it from? 63, I think. Yeah, if I watched it then... I'd be terrified. Watching it now, it's like, yeah, it's a good good little scare have for you, the past. <laughs> have you ever been to Leicester Square in London? I don't know. No, it's, it? it's where they have the, the big premieres and stuff. There's this, there's like a cinema, and then there's like a kind of public walkway, and then there's a little park with trees right, right next to it. And apparently when people were leaving the cinema at the premiere of this in, in the 60s, they had like um, bird sounds like through speakers in the trees and stuff, which sounds really cool. So they went like, they really pushed it with uh, the, the bird theme. That's cool. I, yeah, I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought Terry Hedron was great. I thought Rod Taylor as Mitch was great. I thought all like the, the cast members of Bodega Bay, like all the little, you know, even like the, the shopkeeper I thought was really good. Uh, uh, what's her name? Annie, um, the school teacher. I really liked she her was character. Great. Yeah, I liked her character and the intrigue of it. I just loved her and uh, Tippy mm -hmm. together as well. Yeah. There's something about like the way they talked back then. <laughs> I just love listening to their voice and kind of had a different accent back then as well. I don't know what it is. Right. But it's something about the way they talk. I get what you mean. Especially Tippy. Yeah. Oh, I, I could just listen to her talk forever because something really calming about her voice and stuff like that. A little captivating. Yeah, and the character of Mitch's mother, um, I thought was great. In fact, I think she was probably the most interesting character in the film, and her kind of arc throughout it. You know, she's this kind of possessive mother who doesn't want to let her son go away and everything. But you really dig into her character throughout the film with the things that happen, and I thought her character was really interesting. The actress was great. Uh, the effects are. 
great. I mean, I read that How they, do they do that. I read, I read they tried blue screen, but because you know birds fly so fast, it just it didn't work. So they used something else, which I've never even heard of before. I can't remember what it was called. So I really don't even know how they really did the bird effect. So I don't think I really want to because I just was so impressed by because a lot of it is just like they've kind of composited the birds onto the shot after the fact. Though there's a lot of shots where they use real birds, like the sequence outside the school with all the is it ravens. They kind yeah. of they turn up on the um, like the play set behind her like that was great like the tension again he's great at just crafting these tension filled scenes yeah. and he should have done Alien and it's a great concept <laughs> it's a great it's a great concept to to take something that we all see in our day to day lives pretty much I mean if you walk outside you're probably going to see a bird and just that mm -hmm. idea of what if they did all turn on us you know and I love that old woman the the bird specialist in the cat in the diner where she's like you know if they all turned on us there's billions of them like they would take over you know uh, so there's that kind of intriguing uh, frustrating scary idea of what if animals just completely turned on us and just decided to fuck us up basically because they could do some real damage and that it takes something that seems so normal and harmless in real life and so well what if they did do this you know you'd be pretty screwed and so when you get to that end of the film when they're literally trapped in the house they're boarding up all the doors and stuff and the birds are breaking through and it somehow doesn't feel that ridiculous you know even though the idea of it uh, is never explained and I loved that there was never this like well the reason the birds thing is because no nothing there's no explanation and uh, yeah, so I, I really like that aspect of it as well. And we watched the little reconstructed kind of alternate ending that never got filmed. It was just bits of the script and storyboards and stuff, which was basically what I thought the film was going to end with, but it didn't. And uh, I thought that was fine. So yeah, it leaves you hanging, I guess. Yeah, it leaves you wanting a little bit more. And another thing I wanted to add was that I really like the relationship between Mitch and Melanie. Like, it's, it's quite tempestuous, you know, they kind of rub each other the wrong way. The scene where they meet in the bird shop at the beginning is so fun and just, I, I love the playful nature of their relationship and where it goes throughout the film. Also, the film's quite brutal at times, which I wasn't expecting at all. Like, it really makes you feel the the severity of what these birds can do. There's a couple of shocking moments that I wasn't expecting in terms of how graphic some of the violence would be. I mean, it's very kind of tastefully done in that Hitchcock kind of way where it kind of cuts away before you see anything too serious, but you still feel the weight of that kind of uh, imminent threat from these birds, and I thought that that was uh, really added to the overall story as well. So, anything else, really? No, no. it was... What, uh, was it a film you should see yes. before you die? Yeah, I, I agree. I was really surprised by this one. I was expecting it to be good, obviously, because it's Hitchcock, but um, it just, because it just looked like one of those kind of B movies, you know, like Birds Attack, you know. I thought, oh, Hitchcock did one of those. Sharknado. <laughs> right, yeah, almost. You know, it's, I, I That's how ridiculous it sounds, but it turns out to be good. I wasn't expecting it to be that bad, but I mean, I just, I didn't think it would be great, but it was great. I loved it. And I just love the characters, the location, the setting, the acting. Really, really good. Definitely want to go back to it again and again. And definitely a film you should probably see before you die. So, there we go. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.